success of your leaders basically guarantees that the ideas that they were representing have, to a degree, come to pass, been furthered, been strengthened, have succeeded, have taken root. And if they won an election, a large portion of the population agrees with those ideas and thinks that they should be furthered in a greater part of your nation and your national fabric. If that is the case, why would people root against a leader? Spoiler alert, we're talking about Trump. We're talking about Trump and the people that seem to be opposing him. I shouldn't say seem to be opposing him. They're absolutely opposing the fact that he won. They don't like it. They're very upset about it. And they don't seem to be upset about it for reasons of policy. That I could understand. You're worried that his policies are not going to be successful, or they are going to be successful in achieving things that you do not agree with. If you are someone who thinks that corporations are horrible, evil entities, and any power given to them will be to the detriment of humanity, then you don't want policies advanced that give them any more power or freedom. If you believe that the government is better suited to manage economies, social programs, you name it, then any policies that detract from the power of government, you would reasonably not agree with. Vice versa. If you agree, if you disagree with all of those things, you like policies that do that. But the thing is, generally speaking, neither of those is correct. There are times in history where a large government is, or at least a powerful government, is useful. one would say in times of war, crisis, these types of things, people want a large, powerful nation-state to defend their interests, and if that government is virtuous and relatively smart, certainly their efforts are faster and more direct than a decentralized, nebulous, you know, free market economy type solutions. Certainly a nation top-down can better prosecute a war than a disparate committee of atomized individuals. However, in other times in history, a large top-heavy, or at the very least, top-power-heavy, top-down government is disastrous, is absolutely stifling creativity and wealth creation, prosperity, and just general freedom, which I think we should all agree is a moral good. So what we should be looking at in these times where a leader, president, is elected that we don't necessarily agree with, we should be saying, hey, if 
enough people think that the thing that we need is on the other side of the issue. You know what? Let's look for the good in that. Let's hope they achieve that good. And then we can add our good next time. just look outside, look about their day-to-day, -day, and say, yeah, I think this seems to be the right way to go forward, necessary for our continued success. The people that I see arguing against it and arguing that specifically is horrible are always pushing a hyperbolic angle Trump is a fascist he represents some uniquely despotic authoritarian aims and more than that he is absolutely achieving them. Then when pressed, they tend to not actually have great answers, or if they do, the answers are slow in coming. The answers are very much qualified. Well, hey, how about this? I need to prime you to think badly about this. If you have a good answer for why this person is a fanatical fascist, authoritarian lunatic who is not only willing but capable of achieving horrible, horrific, anti-democratic things, you would say those things, right? I mean, it's a large claim, so you've got to have a large, significant amount of evidence, a large, strong body of evidence bring to prove such a big claim, because that big claim necessitates a big, 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 big response. also, I'll be honest, degrade the usage of the word. Like it doesn't have, like if someone calls you a fascist or a Nazi or whatever, even a communist nowadays, it just doesn't have any punch. You know? Oh, 
terms of sort of tribal politics. I'm not worried about his policies. I'm angry his team won. I'm angry my team lost. Because the policies you could be reasonably worried about that I, I understand. I understand you could be worried that, you know what, I think workers' rights and health care and these types of things will be negatively affected under him. Okay. I, that, that's a reasonable objection. The problem with that objection is... Looking at the opposition to Trump, those policies didn't seem to be there. It didn't seem like Harris was representing workers and, you know, the common people. Which is, you know, and again, this is backed up by plenty of people who after the election is over, suddenly they shift their sales and they say, oh, no, 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 the person that I was supporting, uh, actually, yeah, they abandoned all of the principles that I hold dear and are, and are great. It's very convenient for you, but if that is the case, then I can't imagine you're actually worried about the policies of the incoming administration. You're maybe just worried that your team is going to lose for the foreseeable future. Because policies winning seem where we're at. Obviously, there's always a road forward, and we're on that road. Whether it goes through treacherous paths, or a, you know, safe, sunny road, who knows? 